When you think of the enemies in Half-Life Alex, you probably think of the new Combine variants that were added upon its release. If not, then you might think of the newly designed headcrab enemies who look a lot more varied than the last game. If not even that, then you might be thinking of Jeff, or any of the other new Zen fauna introduced into it. What you're probably not thinking of are the antlions, which only appeared at the tail end of the story and were well, quite the pushover, not to say that they posed absolutely no challenge, but they were definitely child's play compared to the active gunfights you get against the Combine and the horror of basically every Zen interaction. Even the first major encounter with zombies, that is to say the one shown in the trailer on the train rather than the one that's banging its head on the fence, is shown in a quite terrifying manner. The antlions on the other hand, while they have some decent build up through dialogue, they kind of just show up and start slowly walking toward you. But let's put that aside, this is meant to be a biological analysis, one that I decided to do as a one shot because, well, there are only two of them, and the second is basically a reskin. With that being said, let's look into the biology of Half-Life Alex's antlions. The antlion in Half-Life Alex appears to be some kind of subspecies of the antlions that we've seen in previous games, which isn't implausible, as we don't know the full extent of where these guys come from and how many subspecies they have. This subspecies in particular has much better armor than previous iterations that we've seen, being essentially completely bulletproof. In order to neutralize this antlion, the most practical strategy is to shoot off its limbs, so as to expose the soft flesh on its abdomen, then just fire a few shots in there and it's dead. However, explosives and high ordnance would likely significantly aid this process. As for the antlion's features, it has four legs, two which extend from the top middle of its body to the far front, and two which extend from the bottom of its body that span to the farthest back. Why they have this leg structure is essentially a mystery to me because, well, as far as I've researched, there aren't any bug species on Earth large enough to warrant complex leg structures like this. But if you know something, please put it in the comments. I know that it's based off a real bug by the same name, but uh, it doesn't exactly share the resemblance. The antlion's head is small compared to the rest of its body with four small spikes surrounding it. However, as opposed to previous antlion designs, behind these are an actual mouth with two rows of teeth each. These appear to be carnivorous in nature, which in a way recontextualizes the antlions in this game and may explain why we see so little of them. See, in the first game, Gordon will often be swarmed by many antlions at times when creating a disturbance in the sand, which I believe was, of course, the antlions trying to protect their home. I ruled out the possibility of them hunting for food because of the way how their mouth was structured, being more suited for liquids. However, with this antlion seemingly being more carnivorous, it could be hypothesized that most of the antlions that Alex run into are more likely to be hunting for food for their colony, and thus are far less in numbers than the actual force of antlions defending home. On the bottom side of its head, the antlion has two small appendages which appear to be similar to the arms of a mantis, in other words, raptorial. These little arms are likely used to hold small prey, or more likely small chunks of food for consumption. Finally, the antlion's blood is most likely to be a large scale version of hemolymph, which is basically a bug's version of blood. Generally, on Earth, hemolymph is found to be a pale yellow in coloration, which is because it's composed of mostly plasma and some immune cells along with a bunch of other chemicals, but we don't exactly see Earth insects glow yellow everywhere we go, in most cases, I guess, so I'm going to take a guess that antlion hemolymph is more than just plasma. Another observation that leads me to believe this is this room where antlions are hooked up to a machine and are essentially being milked, presumably of this same hemolymph, by the combine. Now I propose a few theories. For one, 
This could be happening because whatever this fluid truly is, its ability to keep the antlion body running is, for some reason, of interest to the combine. Additionally, it could have naturally occurring chemical elements or compounds that the combine may only be able to synthesize. Thus, farming the antlions would speed up the process of obtaining said chemical. As for my far-off theory, which is still in the same vein, but probably not true, well, assuming it may be blood and not hemolymph, blood color is generally influenced by the metal ion that the carrying molecule is based on. For example, human blood is red because hemoglobin contains iron, which when oxygenated becomes red. And blood that is blue is the same way, but with copper, which turns blue. Now, this sounds outlandish, but hypothetically, the antlion could have chromium in its blood which, when oxygenated in certain cases, turns orange. Currently, chromium can be used in the creation of stainless steel, which isn't the most useful purpose in the world, but the Combine may be able to incorporate it alongside all the other chemicals found in the antlion's blood within their technology. Is this a stretch? Yes, it is an extreme stretch. And frankly, my chemistry class is just starting, and I know a lot less about that than any of the other parts of biology. But I thought, because it's a video game, it would be fun to hypothesize and research into. So, that was the antlion, but there is another version of this antlion, which is an actual reskin. Like, like it's an actual, it's just a straight up reskin. So, just like, take everything I just said, minus the part for the head and blood, and apply it to this guy. Because, as for its blood, it's blue now. And that could either be due to the presence of copper, like I mentioned earlier, or a toxin, or a combination of both. And as for its head, it's quite different from any other antlion that we've seen. For one, its mouth is specialized in a way which I would assume aids its spitting, which is odd because it doesn't exactly leave much room for consumption of food, which, again, kind of stumped me since, as far as I could research, there aren't really any other parallels to this on Earth. So please, let me know in the comments if you've seen something like this, and let me know if there's like some obscure research paper about it or something. As for the second oddity, its eyes are weird. They look like a fly's eyes at first, but while they are red, they don't have the texture that those kinds of eyes generally do. Rather than that, I think this is a form of arthropodal ocelli, simple eyes that only slightly aid with sight, which, for all the antlions we've basically seen thus far, is basically revolutionary, as none of the antlions from any of the previous games ever had any kind of sight. This one, on the other hand, oddly enough, likely displayed the same kind of evolutionary history needed to develop eyesight, but in an odd way where organisms that have survived each generation somehow developed this bulbous mass rather than no eyes at all like the other antlion, or at least compound eyes like many Earth insects. And that just about wraps it up for the Alex Antlions. As you can probably tell, there's a reason I decided to do this on a one-shot, which is my series where I make a video in one day while saying something meaningful, because there's really only one antlion to do any major research on. But as an aside, if you're a fan of this channel, it's important that I get your input now, because this is actually a test on the kind of format that I'm going to use on my Helldivers biological video, which is going to be coming out at the end of this month. It's going to be in a lab, like the footage you saw here, and based on feedback from you guys, I also tried to tone down the announcer feel of my voice, which was actually compared to the narration of an episode of Cops at one point, which was just hilarious. I got a good laugh out of that one. But yeah, with that out of the way, if you're looking forward to my future projects, subscribe to get notified when I upload, and like this video and my others, and comment on them too to push them out to the YouTube recommended pages. With that being said, thanks for watching. And goodbye.